Hello YouTubers, this is Sassy Ace. Went by the grocery store this evening and while I was there I picked up a number of previously enjoyed DVDs. The first one, based on a true story and featuring Alan Rickman in the cast. In fact, he is supposed to be really good in this film. Bottle Shock. This tells the true story of a California winery that uh, goes up against the French wine industry in a blind taste test type of thing to prove that they have the taste. In fact, on the back it says here, uh, one small American winery and its workers are about to show the French that the world's finest wine will now come from the other red, white, and blue. This includes four deleted scenes, a behind the scenes documentary entitled An Underdog's Journey, uh, a documentary on the real uh, winery in question, Chateau Antelina, one winery search for excellence, and an audio commentary with the cast and crew. Another film based on a true story. This one took place in Australia. Cry in the Dark. This stars Meryl Streep and Sam Neill. And I believe in the cast, there's also uh, Nick Tate, who was one of the regular cast members of Space 1999 and appeared in an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. Anyway, uh, I remember when this story first broke in the news way back in the 80s. A uh, woman uh, reported that her baby had been dragged off by a dingo that is a wild dog. And she is, her and her family, her and her husband, in fact, are found guilty in the uh, arena of public opinion. Uh, supposedly poor uh, forensics and bigotry was uh, what they were up against. This was produced by uh, Canon Films of all people in 1988. The uh, original Australian title, Evil Angels. Okay, another foreign film, this one shot in and around London by David Cronenberg. Eastern Promises. Now, supposedly this film is extremely gory and violent. No guns, and knives. This film wound up on several reviewers' uh, top 10 lists, so I look forward to uh, seeing it. It was distributed here by Universal. Okay, we have now another film in the Exorcist series. This one, a prequel, Exorcist, Exorcist, The Beginning, widescreen. I believe all of these are widescreen. Previously enjoyed, you know, that makes it seem better than used. This from Warner Home Video. Warner, Warner Brothers must be the last studio to hold on to the home video thing instead of going to home entertainment, which most of the companies did once. DVD replaced VHS and Laserdisc. This film, another foreign film, uh, Factotum, I'm going to say that's how it's pronounced, I don't really know. This one is rated R and was distributed here by IFC Films and the Weinstein Company. Weinstein Company puts out a lot of foreign films here. James Bond film, Quantum of Solace. In English, Spanish, or French, in widescreen. Uh, aspect ratio 2.40 to 1. That's fairly wide. 
includes uh, another way to die music video theatrical and teaser trailers so not much in the way of behind the scenes or extra stuff but $9.99 and I was kind of uh, sad to read a couple weeks ago I guess um, that MGM announced that they were no longer going to be making any James Bond films. Of course MGM has been having a lot of financial problems in the last few years, the last several years actually. Okay, this is an expensive film that didn't make much money. It cost eighty million dollars to make and made twelve million worldwide. This is a sci fi film, a sound of thunder. And it's based on a short story by Ray Bradbury uh, about a company that uh, takes people back into the age of the dinosaurs with the understanding that you don't touch anything, you don't leave anything, and you don't bring anything back. But of course, somebody does bring something back, and the results are catastrophic. Now, supposedly, this has horrendous special effects, directed by Peter Himes, of all people who has directed several good uh, good films. Now, one of the, uh, well, let's see here. This book says that it sat on the shelf for three years or so because it was really bad and the distributor didn't want to mess with it. But if you go online and look, say at Wikipedia, they say that it was delayed because of a flood in Prague and also the original production company went bankrupt in the middle of post-production. At any rate, it was released in the U.S., barely scratched the surface as far as making any money, and supposedly the Australian release was canceled because the North American release did so poorly. Anyway, takes place in Chicago 2055 and uh, get around to watching that someday. This is supposed to be really good uh, direct-to-DVD sequel and of course Leonard Malton has a, has a um, practice or whatever that he does not list direct to DVD releases at all. I suppose this one is really good. It's the second sequel or follow up film to the TV series Stargate SG1. This is Stargate Continuum. And let's see. Directed by Martin Wood. I'll be looking for that because it's supposed to be really good. Now, this was released theatrically, so I don't know why it didn't get listed here. And was also uh, the basis for a anime series in Japan. This uh, film is called Ultra Violet. And this is the unrated expanded cut basically adds about seven minutes to the film from the theatrical version which ran 88 minutes this runs just over 94 minutes now if I remember correctly the anime series that was made based on this was called um, ultraviolet uh, 044 but I may not be remembering that exactly uh, as always uh, if you have any questions about Anything I say, look it up. Anyway, this is supposed to be really uh, good, so I look forward to checking it out. This is a remake, and it's not supposed to be good. The original film wasn't that good. When a Stranger Calls. This is about a babysitter who gets a call 
uh, informing her that the children are in danger and she better watch out. She finally winds up calling the police and they trace the calls back to the house she's in babysitting the kids. Anyway, as I said, the original film wasn't all that good and this one's supposedly no better. Languages are English and French. Aspect ratio 2.40 to 1. That's, as I mentioned earlier, a fairly wide aspect ratio. So, thus concludes the DVD ads for this time around. Also, did pick up one book Ghost Country. This has an uh, interesting sounding premise. Uh, let's see. What Paige Campbell saw when she opened the door into several 70 years from now scared the hell out of her. She and her tangent colleagues brought their terrible discovery to the president and were met with a hail of automatic gunfire after leaving the White House. Only Paige survived. Fearing a terrifying personal destiny revealed to him from the other side of the breach, Travis Chase abandoned uh, tangent and Paige Campbell. Now he must rescue her because Paige knows tomorrow's world is desolate and dead. A ghost country scattered with the bones of billions. And doomsday will dawn in just four short months. Unless they can find the answers buried in the ruins to come. But once they cross the nightmare border into ghost country, they might never find their way back. That kind of sounds like an interesting premise and uh, has the potential of making a good movie, I think. Anyway, Ghost Country. Until next time, stay awesome.